Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. In this video, we are going to be implementing custom exception handling on our Django Restroom Work API. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to see how to tap into the exceptions being thrown by the framework and see how we can customize things like the status code, the responses. We will also be looking at how we can provide a custom 404 JSON response because by default, Django will be sending you an HTML page and for an API only application, it would make sense to use JSON even for errors. Then we'll see how we can catch the server errors, mostly the errors that come from the application so that we can see where we can tap into if we wanted to implement things like error reporting. Okay, so if we come over here, you will see that this is, uh, I'm trying to go to the registration endpoint, but something is going wrong here. So what's going wrong is uh, I'm trying to access an endpoint that doesn't exist. So you see when we go here, the message we get has a custom message, which is a JSON response. So by default, this will be an HTML document. So we'll see how to change that. Another thing you will notice here is we have a status code here in the response. And that's because for every error response, we are gonna be seeing how we can append the status code just so it can become easier to work with on our front-end applications if we need to. Another thing we'll do is we'll handle the 500 responses. So yeah, if I go to the register, the correct register, which should not throw a 404 and go there, you'll see that this one is a server error, meaning I've intentionally caused the application to return a server error. So that's why you see we get this kind of response being sent back. So in a, in a situation like this, since this is an error resulting from the server, you can do more things like reporting these kinds of errors to like a bug tracking service. And I'll show you how you can get all the details of the errors so you can know what exactly to send if you, if you ever need to implement something like that. So you know how when you go to a protected endpoint and, and you're not authenticated, so I'm gonna remove my token here. You know how you get that uh, authentication Authentication credential details are not provided message. We're gonna see how we can change that to provide something that's more custom, like please log in to proceed. So yeah, so also I'll show you how you can, you can change like status codes. So let's say you had a protected endpoint, but literally you would not want the server to throw like a 401, or for some reason you wanted to, let's say return a 200 in case of a 401, just as an example. So here I'm gonna to go to auth user. So you notice that I'm going here, and this is the protected endpoint. So if I could come over here, so if I could come over here, you will see that this here is a protected endpoint, meaning we want to use every other feature that Django provides us, like permissions and validating the tokens and stuff, but still be able to, to customize it and also add some custom functionality. So now you will notice that when I do this, we get the response, which is good. We get a 200, which is good, but when there is an issue, we also send a 200. So let's say this was a requirement that we needed to do for some reason, the things usually come up. You will see how we can be able to change the status code. And this usually comes up when you're using like a custom JWT implementation. You will find you're getting like a 403 and you want a 401. So it's gonna be interesting. Let's go ahead and see how we can implement these kinds of features. So to get started, I've only added a class that retrieves the current user information and I've given it this permission to protect the user to access this endpoint without being authenticated. So that's the only thing that's new. Everything else are the things we have built in the previous tutorials. So guys, if you're new and this is the first video you're checking out, I recommend you check out the previous ones. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. So now, the way we get started is we need to set up a, an exception handler function. So I'm gonna create a folder here. I'm gonna call it utils, because it's gonna be handling some utilities. So I need to make sure it's in the root of the project. So I'm gonna move it here, make sure it's there. And now that we've created the folder in here, I'm going to have a file called exception handler. So when you have this, I'm gonna set up a function that's gonna be called custom exception handler. So when you set up a function like this, you're going to need to pass two things. So the first one is gonna be the exception, and then the other thing is gonna be the context, okay? So these two things, whenever exceptions are being thrown, they're gonna be run through this function, and they're gonna be sent through this way. So the first information will be sent will be the exception specific information. And then the context will basically be the other information like where the exception is being thrown from, which view is thrown, throwing the exception, those kinds of things. So in here, since we want to provide a custom response for the not authenticated exception, we're gonna have to first 
we are going to have the first call the default rest framework exception handlers so here i'm going to set up this uh, dictionary here so i'm going to call it handlers and then in here we're going to be having the exception and then a function to handle it so the first exceptions we are going to be handling will be the validation errors so the validation error i'm going to set up a function to handle this so it's going to be called uh, handle generic error this should be validation and guys you need to be keen with this because they are very specific in fact i'm gonna bring them in here now to make sure we save up some time okay so the django rest framework by default will have a way to handle this so we want to be tapping into how how it handles this okay so let's create this function i'm gonna come over here and create it create the handle generic response handle generic error function so when we create it it's gonna be passed a few things so one of them is going to be the exception another one is going to be the context another one is going to be the response okay so for now we'll do just something simple we'll just return the response to keep everything working so return the response but now the way we, we are going to handle the not not authenticated which is the one we want to customize the message to please log in to continue let's create that so def handle authentication error that's gonna take in the exception, the context, and the response. Okay, so we already know what we want. We just need to change response dot data. So we're gonna set that one to a dictionary that will contain an error and then a message, something like "Please log in to proceed." Okay, looking good already. So now we need to make sure that the default behavior is not altered. So over here, I'm going to import the exception handler from REST framework views. So when we get this here, I'm going to set up a response. So the response is going to be basically the exception handler that we already have. So in the exception handler, we need to pass it the exception we want to handle and also the context. Okay. So now we need to tell REST framework how it should pass the exception to our custom functions here. So what we do is now we need to define an exception class here so exception class this is gonna be basically what you already have the exception then on it we call data class then we call name and the name okay so it's gonna be returning us a class name so something like validation error permission denied etc etc okay so once we have this we need to check if the exception class actually exists in the one we have so let's do something like if in our handlers then we need to handle it our way so we can return if it is in our handlers then we want to we want to handle it using our functions so here we can basically return handlers the exception class and then we pass it there so that's going to be the ex the exception the context and the response so let's pass those right here okay so if it's not any of these so if it's not something we are handling here we want to let the django rest framework handle it gracefully so here we can just return the response we already have it other than that then everything is going to be handled by our custom functions okay so now this is looking good already so the next thing you want to do is you want to tell the django rest framework to use this function whenever it is handling exceptions so you want to go to your settings.py and then you want to go to the rest framework section and then you want to define another key so another key here you need to add the exception handler key and then you need to define the path to your function so ours is in utils then exception handler dot py where well, you need to set up it under init here so that the imports work properly so right here that is going to be in utils then dot exception handler dot py that's going to be exception handler should be like this then the name of the function so our name of the function is custom exception handler so you make sure you set it up correctly so if i do this so currently what we have already done is we're making sure that when the user when the application throws an authentic an auto authenticated error we handle it using handle authentication error so over here you see that's what we are doing but we need to return the response to so return response so let's test if that one is working so if you go back over here again and go to let's say we are going to expenses expenses we are trying to maybe get them without being logged in i'm going to change this one to off send and then you see we get login to proceed okay so that's good already and I think we want to do is to be able to add status codes to every error response we send. So the way we can do that is we're going to go over here in our custom exception handler. So we're going to check if actually we have response. So we can check if response is not none. 
then we want to do response to data actually the data dot status code dot status code then we're gonna set set it to response dot status code that's the response we have since this is being actually overridden by our our handler we want to make sure we are also setting it here so here we need to set the the, X, the status code and also set it to to our response dot status code so if we come back again and click send or oh, what are we doing ah oh, we need a comma here cool so let's try it again and you'll see that we get the status code in the responses so another thing we are going to need to do is how we can send a different status code instead of the one raised by the django rest framework so over here like i mentioned in the views.py i have this view it's uh, at slash slash user so if we go slash user right now you see that it sends us please log in to proceed but you see that it sends us a 401 but what if we wanted to change it to a 200 and maybe send a response like user is not logged in because this is not really we might need to customize this in one way or the other so the way we can do that is we could actually go in our exception handler we can inspect what is contained in these two so that we know where the exception is being thrown from for example here we would want to know we would only want to do something like that if it is being thrown by the other specific view so here i'm going to add a pdb right here that will do some inspection so I'm, now when we run it again you see that it's paused so right here if i can go to, down here and check what's in the context you see that it's giving us the view so you can see the view the way it's written is we actually have the view name in there so meaning we can actually check if the view name is the one we are targeting and then let's check what we can get in the exception so here if i put this you said this is a not authenticated so here you can actually check what the status code is so status code and you see it's a 401 meaning we can just we can check if it's this view and it is sending us a 401 then we send a different response actually like you saw we can customize everything almost so that's what you would do so let's do that so here we can check so i'm gonna do an if so we can check if the if that is in we're gonna turn everything into a string because that can uh, we're gonna turn into a string so we can just check through it so if it is in there then we want to check if the status code is 401 so if that's the case then we can handle a custom response so let's do something like response status code then we're going to set it to 200 then let's also set the the data so response to data then we're going to set it to a dictionary then we can have something like is logged in then we can do something like false <laughs> okay looking good this shouldn't be three okay so this if should be checking in the context then the view we see that the context is a dictionary which we can get the view so we want to check for that this so i'm going to remove the debugger it should be like this okay so let's try it again you notice that our status code is 200 and then we are sending a 200 so we're missing the data here and that's because we are not returning it so let's return this response because that's what we want to use we don't want it to be tampered with so let's try it again so you see we get this and notice that every time you change something let's say you handle something in a specific way you're going to need to define these things again okay so let's also do that you always want to make sure that your api is consistent okay this one we already know it's 200 so let's just add it all right looking good so the last thing i'm going to be showing you guys is how to handle the errors gracefully so let's say user is trying to access something like user you see what we get here we get basically an html page but let's say we want to handle it using json so the way we can do that is over here in the views in actually in the urls in the application urls we need to define a few specific things so what we need to do is here we need to define these two so the first one is going to be a handle 404 we need to define a handle 404 so the handle 404 we provide a view that should basically handle it so you set it to a view in your application so let's now set it to so in a in our in our utils i'm going to set up a new file it's going to be called views.py and in there i'm going to now have a, a function 
So I'm gonna have a function to handle the 404. So def, I'm gonna call it error 404. This takes in the request. If it's a 404, it will have access to the request context. And then we need to have the exception being thrown. So over here, we can basically define a message that we want to send a user when the, the endpoint is not found. Something like the endpoint is not found. So now that we have the message, we need to return it to the user. So now here, we're gonna use the Django HTTP response because we have something that's already working. So from django.http import JSON response, okay? And this is the, this is the specific way that Django will require us to handle it, even when we are working with the REST framework. So I want to make sure you're doing it this way. If you're using like the Django REST framework responses, it might not work great. So here, let's define our response. So response, this is gonna be JSON response. Then we provide data. So the data can contain like a message. Then message, we already have the message, just to find it up there. Then let's also have the status code because we've been doing it for our other responses. So I want to make sure that is also the case. Then you want to send response status code equals 404. Then you want to return it return response okay so over here we have provided this and now we need to provide the handler so the handler is going to be basically the absolute path to our function our handler function that we just created so that's going to be in uh, utils dot views dot error 404 how did you call it yes error 404 let's make sure we got that okay so now that we have that let's go ahead and handle the 500 it's going to be the same thing actually so the 500, you know, they are thrown when there is an error that happens on the server. Maybe maybe a developer did something wrong. So over here, let's also create that. So it's gonna be 500, uh, everything here. So here you can say an error happened on us. And then in a situation like this, you maybe would want to integrate a service to report these errors that the developers can know when they are happening in production and can pretty much solve them. So here, it's gonna be a 500, then it's gonna be a 500. Okay, so when we're done here, let's go ahead and see how we can like try to access an endpoint that does not exist or try to cross an application error. So I'm gonna go to the authentication.py file. You see where we have the, the permission, the auth user view. I'm gonna add some other errors here. So these are errors that are in the code. So we know this is not there. So now if we go back to our application and try to access this, you see nothing is happening here. And if we went to our auth user, you see that nothing is happening. Let's supply a token. So I'm going to log in here real really quick. Uh, it should be a post. G -g -g -g. Let's make it the token, make sure everything is good. So I'm going to come over here. We want their token. Let's have a new token there. So if we try to do this, oh, this should be going to auth user. Okay, let's see. And then it's a gate actually. So if you go there, you notice that there are errors. So one thing we need to know is that these two, that we just defined these error handlers, will only work when debug is set to false. And if you think of it, the most use cases for these are gonna be when the application is running in, in, uh, in production. So you want to make sure that the debug is done to false. So in the settings of py, you can come over here and then turn this to false. Let's say you're like reporting errors in production, that's gonna be to false, of course. So if we try to do that, you see that it's a server error. So this should be a handler 500, and this should be a handler 400. Okay, okay, so when it comes to the 500 one, we already know it's a 500, so we don't have access to the exception. We only have the request. So make sure that's the case. So if we come back again and try again, let's try the send. You see that we get it being sent to us the way we want. If we try to go to an, uh, an input that doesn't exist. You see that it's also being handled gracefully. So that's gonna do it for the video. If this video helped you, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.